Now we're going to tackle how to record your interview. We'll cover in-person recording first, and then at the end of the video, we'll talk about how to record using digital methods. So um, if that doesn't apply to you, you get out of the second half of this video. Lucky you. Um, so in-person, um, I'm assuming everyone will use their phone or laptop. That's fine. I'm not re requiring you to use any auto recorder or a special mic or whatever. Um, we're working with everyday tools here. So um, if any of you don't have access to a laptop or a smartphone, let me know. No worries, we'll figure something out. Um, but first things first, let's cover how to record an interview with your phone. Um, when I'm doing this, I use an app called Audio, um, not very imaginatively titled. Um, but it's good, it's reliable, um, and it's free, best of all. And yes, to be clear, I do pretty often record interviews with just my phone. Um, since I'm not doing things like radio shows or podcasts, the audio quality is, um, you know, I care, <laughs> but it doesn't need to be perfect. Um, and this app does that just fine. It gets pretty good audio recordings. So if you go ahead and download that app, um, make sure you set the quality to superior. You'll see in the settings. Um, there are lots of other similar apps. Um, I find this one especially easy to use, but in whatever app you use, if you're using a different one or if you're using some other capability, make sure you set the um, quality as high as possible. Um, with a phone, make sure you position the mic really carefully. Um, I think it's easy to um, just kind of keep our phones on our sides and not think about them too much, but in the context of an interview, get the mic as close to your subject as possible. Also make sure that you set it on something that isn't just a table. Um, if someone's, you know, like pounding the table or, um, you know, if sort of a pet hits the table or if anything happens, if it moves at all, um, even just, you know, resting your elbow on it, um, you could mess with the audio and create some kind of distracting sound on the recording. So I often put them on like a, a coffee mug or a pile of books or something just to kind of keep it off of that immediate surface. And it also can help get the mic closer to the person's mouth. Um, if you are using a laptop, um, I recommend that you use Audacity, which is another free software. It's easy to download and install um, and pretty intuitive if you're just recording things. It's primarily an editing software, but easy to record. Just hit the record button and you'll be good to go. Um, the same kind of rules apply. Position your mic carefully, again, close to the subject's mouth. Um, make sure the mic will be able to catch you too, but it's more important that we catch um, what the person you're talking to is saying um, and get it up off the surface of the table or whatever you know, um, surface you're using. Um, right now I'm using two um, massive history books for my own laptop. I think it works pretty well. Um, again, it helps get the mic closer to my mouth and stops me from ruining the audio when I do that. Um, you hear it, but it's not ruining anything. Um, for those of you using online methods, um, that's great. I <laughs> realize that this will probably be a fair few of you um, since we're all social distancing, or we should be at least. I'll wag my finger at you. Um, you know, if, if you're not lucky enough to be uh, isolated with the people you're interviewing, we'll use these methods. Um, RIT has purchased full access to Zoom for um, staff and faculty, and I believe students as well. If that's not true and students, you know, have trouble setting up their own meetings in Zoom, you can use my access. Um, I don't really have a way to check that since I'm faculty, I'm not a student, so let me know if that's a problem. But Zoom's really great, it's easy to use, um, it's pretty reliable. Again, you just kind of hit the record button and go. This of course also captures video, um, so you get out of the photography requirements for this project if you do that. Same thing with Skype, also easy to use. There's an easy recording function. Um, FaceTime, I, uh, I don't use an iPhone, so I'm less familiar with FaceTime, but I know that iPhones have an in-phone um, screen recording function, so that's easy to set up. With that and with any other online service, make sure that your mic is on before you tackle any of this. Um, a phone will do that automatically, but if you're online, it, you could get part way through the recording depending on what you're doing and how it's set up and not have your mic on and that would be really bad. Um, your third option is to just do a phone call which is just fine too. 
not exactly as fun. Um, and for me, it would be way more nerve wracking, but a phone call is fine. Um, so with that, I use an app called a call recorder ACR. Again, it works pretty well. Just hit record and go. Um, but especially if you're using digital methods and not doing all this in person, you need to be careful to get consent to record your conversation before the recording itself. So via email or a preliminary conversation or phone call, um, or as early on in that conversation as possible, because the other party isn't sitting there with you in person um, and they're not gonna see you without a recorder. Um, you just need to be clear about what it is that you're doing. So next up, we're gonna tackle photography methods. Um, but we'll talk a little bit more about the um, documentation paperwork in a bit. 